Good morning. Um, I don't know about you, this is the first time I was able to hear uh, Panetto's, uh, Filippo's presentation and the work. That I've heard little bits about it. It's the first time I've been able to actually see the in depth of the work that he's been doing and that he's proposing. And I, for one, I'm really excited. I think it's uh, fascinating and be really very interested to see how it plays out. And it makes a lot of sense in terms of what we're seeing and not seeing with our uh, results of our decompression therapy. One thing I would like to make a quick note on, the Nackinson study in, refer- in regards to traction, they were talking about traditional traction, as in you know, the standard physical therapy clinics, the mechanical traction versus the decompression therapy that we're seeing with the spine med decompression devices. So initially, so as Tim said, we had uh, this study looked, it was a randomized clinical study looking at 156 lumbar patients and 37 cervical. And, excuse me? Ah, sorry. It is. There we go. Oh, okay. So we looked at 156 lumbar patients and 37 cervical. Uh, the standard uh, protocol for treating with decompression therapy for the lumbar is 20 sessions uh, to 25, depending on the actual, uh, uh, if we're looking at herniated disc versus degenerative disc. But generally speaking, we're going to look at these, these patients were treated with 20 to 25 sessions. And uh, we looked at, for the lumbars, they looked at uh, changes in VAS scores, uh, oswestry, and, uh, disability, and perceived disability. Now, of the 156 patients, 56 were actually had some history of surgical uh, uh, intervention. Uh, they were mean of uh, six and a half years out from their surgical intervention. It was it randomly, it was evenly split between uh, 50% males and females, and uh, the mean age was about 54 years in both. Uh, now, one of the absolute uh, contraindications for uh, decompression therapy with a spine med device is any kind of uh, hardware fixation from uh, surgical intervention, and so that, those were all excluded. Following the following the, the uh, 20 to 25 session protocol, what we saw was in the Oswestry scores a, a mean reduction from 33 to 13. Uh, and this was interestingly, this was seen across the board in both the surgical and non-surgical uh, groups of patients. Uh, with perceived disability rating, uh, we saw a uh, 41% of the patients who had reported moderate to severe disability uh, re- were reduced to uh, minimal. Uh, looking at ADL function, across the board in almost every activity, we saw uh, a uh, 50 to 60% reduction in uh, uh, 56% improvement in their average ADL scores. And this was across the board. That was actually very impressive. And, it's, and these, are all, these findings are all consistent with what I've seen in my clinic as well. This is, act, this is just looking at all the different uh, study, I mean, all the different ADL activities, and you can see they were all very consistent and all significant. Uh, looking at the uh, visual analog scale, what we see is uh, um, a reduction from 5.8 to 0.8 on the uh, pain scale, 1 to 10. And again, this was noted across the whole spectrum uh, from both the surgical and non-surgical patients. Uh, looking at the cervical group, we had a smaller number, obviously, with only 37 patients. And uh, what we saw, these, these were uh, actually 60% female, 40% male, and the mean average, the mean age was about 46 years uh, old in the men and 50 years old in the women. Uh, only three of these 37 had had any kind of surgical uh, uh, history with the cervical spine. Uh, what we see is that, and with the lumbar, the, 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 uh, and no surprise, the, the majority of the pathology was seen in L4-5 and L5-S1. Uh, and with the cervical, it's no surprise we're seeing the, the majority of the pathology seen at C5-6 and C6-7. Here, uh, they were about 
a mean average of uh, probably about uh, seven and a half years out from their surgical history, whereas the lumbar was six and a half. Uh, in the ADL reporting improvements, what we see was a, a significant improvement in standing, uh, car transfers and driving, uh, dressing, and uh, both housework and yard work and work in general, and sleep was improved significantly as well. With the VAS scale, with VAS scores, what's dramatic here is look at this curve at just five days of treatment. Uh, and you see a steady continued improvement throughout the course of, uh, throughout this, the entire 20, 25 treatments. But that first week of treatment is uh, phenomenal. And again, this definitely corresponds to what I'm seeing in my office as well. Uh, now, one of the issues is that there are, there are no true random, randomized control studies showing the effectiveness of decompression therapy versus anything else. And spine med is now in the middle, uh, actually well beyond the middle of a study doing a, a true randomized controlled study with about 130 patients that they're, I think by the end of this month, they'll have completed uh, the entire treatment phase and then hopefully without too much, by within the next year, we'll be seeing some of the results of that. Uh, and again, what I'd say, like, like say is that what we've seen here on these res uh, results is pretty significant and, and very consistent with what I've seen clinically as well. Are there any questions? <coughs>